Um, but other ones to avoid is informational based. So what I mean by that is searches such as where, are, how, is, reviews, you know, and sometimes cost, you know, but if somebody's looking for where are the best businesses in my area for HVAC repair or are there any HVAC repair businesses near me? How much does it cost to get my a AC route repaired? Um, is there like any DIY kits or anything like that? If somebody's lo looking for information, then it's usually low quality at the end of the day. They're never really going to convert because this is the thing is that whilst Google is really great for products and services, it's also an informational search engine. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the PPC Cave. I'm your host, Gene Villanos, with my co-host today, Ryan Fenton. And we're actually back together. And we're starting off well, doing another new series. And it's Google Ads for Beginners. As you've seen, we've kind of been doing our solo thing. But it's nice to be back. Right, Ryan? Yeah, exactly. It's been a couple of weeks where we've been just focusing on our own stuff, our own clients, our own businesses. And uh, yeah, it's nice to kind of get back together again, and record this uh, this episode. So I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, I think we've both been wanting to provide value to our 53 subscribers, I think it is now, which is cool. Um, so yeah, you've been updating things. I've been updating things, been working hard in the background. Uh, it's just nice that we can come together and record this episode. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. And, you know, moving forward, we'll definitely have these times where we're together. Um, but, you know, we're still provide you value, even if it's just us uh, separate with the videos that we create. Um, and just remember, we always drop every Monday at 12 a.m. Mountain Time. That's on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But getting into our new series, Google Ads for Beginners, the first episode was Lead Gen Campaign Overview, which Ryan went ahead and did a full walk through and it's a really important thing to look at if you haven't already make sure you check that out and i did one last time for episode two it's e-commerce return on ad spend explained it's really going through the beginner uh, items for google ads managers that may not have the experience or you know maybe just wants to start with the fundamental basics of things and in this episode we're going to talk about negative keywords for lead gen versus e-commerce so we'll go through and let you know why ne negative keywords are important and it's really important because a lot of the times in shopping or in search you're going to find irrelevancy and the way to trim the fat or get rid of that irrelevancy uh, most effectively is negative keywords. And we'll go through with phrase, exact, and broad, kind of talk about the difference there, and even show you from both e-commerce and lead gen uh, perspective on what's a high intent search compared to low intent search, and also what are things that are transactional or maybe more research-based. Um, not transactional, more of like research-based as opposed to someone that's ready to convert. So um, if you're ready, Ryan, go ahead and take it away with lead gen negative keywords. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm just going to get straight into it and talk about the different things in the search terms report that you should be looking for, what you should avoid in terms of adding negative keywords and what you should be looking for to actively add, you know, and bid on. So getting straight into it number one has to be competitors you know if you see competitor searches coming through you ideally want to add, add them as negative keywords because if they're looking for a competitor they don't want you unfortunately so you know it could be something like hvac where you know your gym's hvac systems for example and you see like uh, c and j or like um albert's like hvac units or whatever it might be you know they're looking to work with that business. If somebody's taken out their phone and looked for that business, searched for that business on Google, they're looking to work with them. They're not looking to work with you. And most of the time, it's an uphill battle to pull that person away from that company and get them to work with you. So it's an uphill battle. I've ran many competitor campaigns in the past. It's never really been profitable. It's always ended quite badly. I think they have their place somewhere. I always think it's a bit of a below the belt tactic personally for me to run a competitor campaign. I'd much rather focus on my client on getting them the best 
quality traffic possible coming through the ads. Um, and that all happens inside the search terms report. So most of the time, my advice would be to add competitors as negative keywords and just focus purely on transactional based keywords, which I'm going to get into soon. Um, but other ones to avoid is informational based. So what I mean by that is searches such as where are, how is reviews, you know, and sometimes cost, you know, but if somebody's looking for where are the best businesses in my area for HVAC repair or are there any HVAC repair businesses near me? How much does it cost to get my a AC route repaired? Um, is there like any DIY kits or anything like that? If somebody's look looking for information, then it's usually low quality at the end of the day. They're never really going to convert because this is the thing is that Whilst Google is really great for products and services, it's also an informational search engine. You know, people use it to look for answers to questions that they have. So if you can negate things such as where, are, how, is, reviews, then you're going to clean that traffic up so that you're only ideally showing for profitable search terms. You know, and if you've already gone in and added competitors and all these informational based searches that I'm talking about, You've already probably cleaned up 90% of the searches that are coming through your ads and you're in a much better position to get high quality traffic coming through your ads. And this is what I say to a lot of my clients is that I can't guarantee you sales. I can't guarantee you leads. But what I can guarantee is that we'll get high quality traffic coming through your ads on a regular basis and that I'll spend every penny ideally um, on high quality traffic so that, you know, we can reduce wasted ad spend by adding negative keywords on the low quality stuff, such as competitors, such as informational, that's never really going to convert. So that's what I usually look for when I'm adding negative keywords, competitors, informational, you know, cost is something that I'm 50, 50 about. If somebody's looking for how much does it cost for X or, you know, what is the cost for a HVAC client, um, you know, to come out and fix the thing, then, you know, always kind of throws me off a little bit. And I'm like, well, in that sense, you know, cost could be somebody looking for information or it could be somebody looking for answers, but then on, it could also be somebody looking to get an idea of, okay, how much do I need to save to get, you know, Jim's HVAC systems to come out and fix, fix my AC unit, you know? So it's 50, 50, you really have to kind of review the searches coming through and go from there. Um, Gene, any thoughts so far? Yeah, I think, you know, you made a good point that there are some informational search terms like cost that could be on the cusp of either both research or transactional, you know, but for, a best practice, you know, for the beginners, I think it is very good to understand what is informational and what is transactional. We can't bet on those search terms that might be in the middle. So it's good to kind of have that uh, dry cut, like black or white. This is what we should go for. And this is what we shouldn't go for. So I agree. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just going to keep going. I'm on a roll. I feel like uh, you holding me back. So I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, what you ideally want to be looking for, guys, is more transactional based keywords. And this is the stuff. These are the golden nuggets, the needle in the haystack kind of searches that you really want to focus on. And if anything, you know, add inside the campaign to bid on, you know, because these there may be hidden opportunities that you hadn't thought of when doing the keyword research the first time around you know you see in the search terms report that people are searching for this search query and you hadn't thought of it you can add it inside the campaign and start bidding on it and start showing up for it because you know it's really relevant to what you have to offer so you want to focus more on transactional in the lead gen niche it's usually local and near me searches because it's all about context right and intent so if somebody's looking for jim's hvac systems or not even branded hvac systems near me or hvac repair near me it, it's easy to understand what the context is what the search what the person is looking for they're looking for a hvac repair business near them so that's why local and near me searches always are the best when it comes to lead generation, because that local near me, it's so clear in the context. They are looking for somebody to come out and service their AC unit, or they're looking for someone to come out and repair something in their area. So that's ideally what we want. The other thing, or the other side of it is people looking for company or 
companies or services, installers, providers, businesses, you know, uh, firms like law firms near me, uh, things like that, you know, uh, AC businesses uh, near me or AC services, AC repair services, for example, I'm on the HVAC kind of niche tonight. So, um, yeah, it makes sense, right? Because if somebody's looking for AC repair services, that's what they're looking for. So it's a high quality search term where somebody's probably going to convert on that search query. Uh, whereas somebody searching for, you know, how much does it cost to fix my AC? The context there is more informational. It's not as high quality as AC repair services. So I'd much rather focus on AC repair, AC repair services than I would do an informational based search. So those are the searches you really want to focus on and finding your search terms report. Anything that's local or near me or in my area or around me, anything like that, or something like company, companies, services, installers, firms, providers, those are the ones that you really want to focus on. Um, I'm sure Gene's going to get onto it in terms of e-commerce about what he looks for when he's looking for e-commerce, but I assume it's going to be a similar situation. It's going to be things such as like, you know, best t-shirt companies or something like that or best trousers or best pants near me or whatever it might be so i think there's a local aspect there to be had with e-commerce as well this is where i think lead generation and e-commerce kind of blend over a little bit because there's mom and pop stores there's a lot of local businesses and things like that that sell products so that's where near me and local can work as well which is really good just a few little notes to that as well when you're in your search terms report and you're looking to add negative keywords just to make your life a little bit easier. I don't think a lot of people know about these little tricks. I, for one, I'm super lazy. So I'm always looking for the easiest way to manage my clients. And, you know, especially with the search terms report, because you're basically looking at a hell of a lot of data, a hell of a lot of words on the screen. So you ideally need to work efficiently as possible. Number one, I rarely focus on searches that have one impression. If I see like, if I go into my search terms report, usually there's like so many searches that I've just got one impression, which is just one person searching for it one time. I focus more on searches that I've had two, three, four, five, and more impressions because that shows that people are actively searching for these searches, for these keywords, right? That it's not just a one-off, you know, it could be a fluke. So that's why I don't really focus on uh, searches with just one impression. I'm going to focus on searches with two, three, four, five, because more than one person has searched for the search term. The other side of it is making your life easier. I like to use filters. So when I go inside the account, I'll use the added slash excluded. So go through and make sure you got that box ticked. And then that's going to take away anything that you've added as a search term, anything that you've excluded and negated as a search term. That's number one. Number two is I will focus first probably on cost. So I'm looking at the cost column and what I'm going to do there, rather than going to cost, I'm going to select clicks and go greater than zero or naught so that I'm focusing on searches that have had more than one click. So I'm just ignoring all the ones that haven't had a click and I'm focusing on the searches that I've had a click and I'll sort by cost and then I'll see, right, these are the searches where I've spent the most amount of money. Are they profitable for me? And then in my head, I'll work through the search terms and say, right, is this a profitable one? Do I need it to add it as a, a negative? Do, should I, do I want to add it inside the account? How do I want to play this? Once I've gone through that, I'll remove that click filter and then add impression. And that's where I'll go greater than one impression. So now I'm only looking at search terms that with two, three, four, five, six, and more impressions. And again, I'll sort by impressions and I'll go through. And it's the same thing. Is this a profitable search term for me? Do I want to add it as a negative? Do I want to add it inside the account? Or am I just kind of happy to keep it in the search terms report for now? So that's something else. And then sometimes I'll go in and add a less than 0.01 one conversion so you want to click on conversions and you want to select the less than symbol and go 0.01 because obviously if you're using um i think it's data-driven attribution models it's going to account 
for the uh, for the individual conversions as well. It's not just going to be one, two conversions. It might be 2.37, for example, conversions. So half a conversion or whatever might be attributed to certain search terms or keywords or whatever it might be. So I'll go in usually and select less than 0.01 conversions. And then I'm just seeing all searches that have had less than one conversion. So I know I'm not negating or adding any negative keywords to searches that have had any conversions. That's what I'm trying to get at. So use your filters, you know, and I don't know if you know as well, guys, you can save filters. So for example, I have a few clients where it's all branded search traffic. I want to identify where the uh, the brand isn't being shown. So rather than me going through and selecting the search term filter saying does not contain, you know, brand A, brand B, brand C, I can do it one time and then I can save that search as a filter. So then I can just go in and select it, you know, in, in the filters itself. So I don't have to keep doing it every time I go into the account. Um, it just select that. And then all of a sudden I've got my search terms report set up, ready to go. That doesn't contain any of those brands. I can go through and start looking through. Do I want to add this as a negative? Do I want to um, add it inside the account to bid on? So definitely look to use filters. That would, is something that I would definitely recommend. Um, and yeah, use negative keyword lists as, where possible as well. So negative keyword lists are really, really good. You know, you can kind of add them as more of a global level and then just apply them to individual campaigns. That can work really well. It takes a little bit more management, in my opinion, because you have to, you know, be sure of definitely I want to add this as a negative and apply it to all campaigns. Because if you don't do that, you might inadvertently add a negative keyword inside a campaign where that is a profitable keyword, for example. You know, it depends how you've set your ad groups up, how you've set your campaigns up. But yeah, negative keyword lists, I am a fan, but I do think they uh, take a little bit more effort to uh, to manage. And then lastly, and my point before Gene uh, gets onto e-commerce negative keywords is, if it's a one word search or a one word brand, I would say add it as a broad match. Um, so for example, you know, or if it's a if it's a competitor. So, for example, let's just say that Jim's HVAC Systems is a, is a competitor. You know, you can just pull out Jim's and add that as a one word broad match negative. So, anytime anyone searches for Jim's, it's not going to show. And then you can add another one that says Jim as a broad match negative. Anytime somebody searches for Jim, nothing's going to show. Now, if it's two words, something such as like Calvin Klein, well, you could add. Calvin as a broad match negative. You could also add Klein as a broad match negative. Another way of doing it would be to completely negate Calvin Klein and use that as a phrase match. So anything, when anybody searches for anything resulting around Calvin Klein, it's going to negate that. You're not going to have any searches from now on as uh, as Calvin Klein. So you've got to be smart with how you uh, how you add your negatives. Google by default uses exact match negative, which means you're going to negate that exact search query. That's all fine and dandy, but you're going to have a lot more management on your hands if you spend a little bit extra time and just add certain search terms as broad match negative, as phrase match negative. You're going to send a lot, save a lot of time in the long run. So yeah, Gene, any thoughts on anything I said about lead generation negatives? Yeah, no, I love that you use filters. I don't ever use filters and that's something that i you know should probably take a look at i mean for the most part i don't really get clients uh where it's you know already like a running account so a lot of the times these are search terms that i'm seeing for the first time so i'm relatively quick with creating the negative keywords to that but if you do have maybe even like a client that is already established and you're in their auditing i could see why filters is you know very very important as opposed to you starting like with the particular search terms that you know from scratch so um but yeah no i i think that was that was really good i'm gonna try that after this for sure thank you um but yeah if there's nothing else there i can go through with negative keywords for e-commerce. And I think Ryan really touched on uh, a lot of similarities with uh, lead gen versus e-commerce. Uh, for me, it's really breaking down the two types of e-commerce 
Google Ads accounts. It's usually an arbitrage or I would say you selling different brands for a particular store. Like say you have a water filter store and you're selling three or four or five different brands or you're a one product, one store, you know, they call it private label, your own company and you're selling just your brand. I think it's really uh, easy to kind of uh, think that those two types of e-commerce Google Ads accounts are are similar and we should go about creating negative key keywords similarly, but there's a lot of different caveats. One being irrelevant offering. And we know obviously an irrelevant offering for, for someone that sells maybe Adidas shoes versus Adidas basketballs. You have basketballs versus shoes, you know, so you could create negative keywords for those offerings that don't really make sense for it to remain inside your shopping or search uh, for e-commerce. But it gets a little tricky, right? Because I've done this, especially if you're in arbitrage. Sometimes, even if you get the brand name Adidas or Adidas or Nike, whatever it may be, sometimes I'll create that as a negative keyword, you know? And you're like, Gene, why would you, you're selling Adidas shoes. You know, why would you create Adidas as, you know, just the brand itself that you're selling as a negative keyword? Well, it goes back to the point the very first point, is it a relevant offering? Adidas, the brand is relevant, you know, for sure. But what's more relevant is Adidas shoes and Adidas basketballs as opposed to the brand itself. So there are some particular ad groups. Once I've, you know, gotten the data, sculpted the data, seen, okay, here comes the Adidas brand search terms filing in. All right, now it's time to go ahead and make Adidas, just Adidas as a, you know, whatever it may be, just the brand as an actual negative keyword. Uh, any thoughts on that, Ryan, with how you would go from an actual brand and making that a negative keyword despite of you selling that brand? Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same way because, again, it goes back to what I was saying. There isn't much context behind just one word as a, as a brand. You know, if it's Adidas, okay, that's great. What does that mean? Is that somebody looking to work for Adidas? Is that somebody looking for, like, jobs in, like, one of the Adidas, like, stores or Adidas, I should say Adidas for the Americans out there. Um, but this is the thing is that you need a little bit more context. So I can completely understand adding Adidas, Adidas as an exact match negative um, because, yeah, it's just there's no intent. There's no context there. Whereas somebody looking to buy Adidas, uh, like Samba shoes, size like to, uh, you have weird sizes over there, don't you? In, in the, yeah. like, you got like 22, size 22 or something, 44s, I don't know, something like I, that. I think over it here goes... is like size 10, so yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's the same. I think there's a little bit of a difference, but yeah, we don't go up to 22. It's like 15, oh, okay. 12, 11. 12, but yeah, oh, okay. definitely um, with that, you know, and it really just depends on where the account is. If it's a brand new account, and you went from shoes and then now the brand that you're actually selling Adidas is in, I wouldn't make that a negative keyword just yet, just because you want to make sure that there's that connection that Google sees. Okay. This person made Adidas uh, a negative keyword such er so early in the account history, then what other, you know, brands are we going to show them? You know? So for me, it really depends on the type of qual, uh, quality of traffic and where you're at. Uh, even if I got to Adidas shoes, yeah, that's great. But what if I start seeing like what Ryan says, Adidas Samba size 11? Well, then now I could maybe create not only Adidas as a negative keyword, but Adidas shoes as a negative keyword because I see that it's bringing in Adidas Samba size 11, which is more long tail, you know, more high uh, purchase intent there. So irrelevant offering is definitely my first point. And Ryan touched on this with, with just competitor uh, from the lead gen perspective, but other brands from an e-commerce perspective, if you're an Adidas store and you see a lot of Nike come in, there's just no way that they're going to switch over. But we could take it a step further is even platform loyalty. I believe all platforms have a underlying meaning. You know, uh, for me, when I see someone that searches maybe basketball shoes, Amazon, 
maybe they want something cheap maybe they want something fast you know and that's if that's not your brand and you're not selling on amazon you know why would you bid on that you know if they're on a particular platform i think it's as loyal to a particular brand as some people searching for a particular platform so i automatically make those negative keywords as well you're better off betting on a longer tail more even or not longer tail, more of a broad maybe two to three uh word search term as opposed to something that's specific but has Amazon. So going back, even if we had Adidas Samba size 11 Amazon, I would make that exact match negative keyword. So looking into brand competitors, uh, negative keywords along with platform negative keywords. And Ryan said earlier, be careful with the list that you create, especially on the campaign or ad group level, just because you want to make sure you're not taking out anything that you want to actually show for. But if you're an e-commerce account, it could be safe to say that the other platforms such as Amazon, eBay, Etsy, you know, Nike outlet, you know, being a platform, whatever it may be, that could technically just be a negative keyword list on the whole campaign level to kind of save you headache and trouble later but always you know be careful because uh you know you just want to make sure you you're ready to nuke all of those different um search terms as negative keywords when you do create negative keyword lists for the account level or campaign level um another one from an e-commerce perspective is research and comparison you know, so the the big thing that I could probably see there's a difference between lead gen and e-commerce is when the word price for lead gen could be a very, very high intent, you know, search term where they're ready for the price. Basically, I see that as HVAC quote and quote, in my opinion, is a huge, that's a qualifier, right? Um, but if you're looking for sometimes price, uh, in the e-commerce sector might be like, where's the cheapest price? Or like, I'm not ready to buy this particular shoe because I'm still price shopping. And we all know that Google shopping is the best place to have multiple tabs and to price shop. So it's really uh, important to be aware of this, the distinct research versus transactional uh, high purchase and intent negative keywords and going off of that some of these keywords you might be undecided on you know so a search term that maybe had converted in the past and you see a lot of similarities or maybe even a synonym to that search term and you see another one pop up that's really close to it or maybe it's like what i said earlier adidas samba price and you don't know Gene told me this should be a negative keyword. Ryan told me it shouldn't be. So where, how do I decide? Well, if you don't know and you can't create a hunch because you can't pinpoint if it's relevant or irrelevant, I always say go with the data. So if you were to look at it, make sure that you see if you saw a search term that converted in the past and you're seeing something that's very similar to it or adjacent to that specific search term, you know, create like a threshold in your head you know it could be on the month level week level all time level of how many clicks did it take to get that first conversion for that particular search term that you know converted in the past and how many clicks am i at this search term that's very synonymous to that search term that had a conversion in the past and kind of create a little threshold i like to go off initial cost uh it's not perfect but i see it as a framework you know because not everything is going to be a copy and paste for all accounts that you manage or that you oversee your offerings and competitors and your budget might be different. So just kind of understanding, say if it took $5 uh, in your budget for one conversion, you know, I usually give it another 20 to 50% before I disqualify it as a negative keyword. Uh, you know, because 50%, if you had something that converted at $5, you know, that means that's high intent. That means you targeted the right audience that's qualified traffic. But if you spent 50% of that and it's been $10 on that particular search term with still no conversions or anything, then maybe it's safe to say 
that that is a negative keyword. Like I said, it's not perfect uh, because and it could be very costly because if you look at 50% off, you know, $5 is not a lot. You're going to spend $10 on a click. But what if you're looking at, you know, $100 and then now you have to wait $200 for you to create that a negative, you know, keyword. So I say between 25 to 50%. Um, you know, just so that you can look at it and be like, okay, I've seen enough. I don't want to waste any more money on something that's probably not going to convert, even though it's distant cousin search term converted, you know? So sometimes that's how it is. You know, uh, we think that a particular search term is going to convert or something that's similar is going to convert. And if we had that thinking and we didn't look at the actual data that Google is showing us, then we wouldn't be really PPC managers. We would just be fortune tellers to think that, okay, this search term is going to work just because the the other one did so always go back to the data especially when it comes to negative keywords ryan anything to add as we wrap up yeah just a couple things actually that's a really good point about looking at your cost per cost per click column i nearly said cost per conversion but cost per click columns i added a negative key uh keyword earlier actually for 17 dollars that was the uh that was the cost but average cost per click price there so that was a lot so i thought yeah, yeah let's just bring that back and it's not profitable you know for the client 17 dollars is just too much no matter how, how well it depends on the niche and what the, the the average is but for this one it was just just crazy ludicrous um not the rapper but it was just absolutely uh <laughs> absolutely bonkers so i had to add that as a negative um Question for Eugene is what yeah. time frames are you looking at when doing negative keywords? When looking at your search terms report, are you looking at last seven days, last 14 days, last 30 days, uh, three months, all time? Like how, how, how far back are you Often. looking? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it really, you know, of course it depends, but to give you an answer, I really, there's a couple of things that I look at. Um, it could be the actual budget spend or even the bid strategy. If it's something like max clicks, um, I'm looking at those pretty often. Any automated, you know, where I know that, okay, well, I, I need to be a little bit more uh, on top of it. Um, and I need to have a little bit of a wider scope, you know, to make sure that, hey, am I the three point fifty three dollars and fifty uh, cost per click that I have? Is that is that doing me well or is that something that's becoming more of a nuisance just having in there? But I think for me, I, I do it, it, it in regards to what type of business it is. Obviously, if it's a new account, I can't go far back. I would probably be looking at more of all time. But if it's a particular account that has been around for multiple years, uh, I like looking at it from all those perspectives, an all time perspective. You know, if I see any crazy uh, cost and maybe low CTR or something, something that I've seen not even clicked, or maybe it's been clicked only one time in the first month that they started Google Ads and it's not even a regular relative search term anymore you know in the last 30 40 60 days it hasn't even shown up as an impression i'll create that like a negative keyword so it really uh depends if i you know where, where the account is and you know kind of like the spend and the bid strategy um for that cool. and then how often are you in there adding negative keywords because for me i always say to people when i'm doing audits every seven to 14 days you want every seven, like every week, two weeks, you want to be logging in, going through your search terms report, adding negative keywords. You know, I do that. Um, I probably do it more every three to five sometimes just to go through. And, you know, it just makes it easier. I think if you leave it too long, you could get too many searches coming through. It's just a big, long job. So if you can stay on top of it quite frequently, I think that can be really good. How long, how, how often are you in there? Yeah. And so that, again, obviously for me would probably depend, but for, for any client that I think is, you're getting a lot of traffic, say the, the, the bid strategy is maybe max clicks and we have like, say 30, 30 a day. I can't afford to let one day go by <laughs> where I'm not looking <laughs> at it just because max clicks is a crazy, you know, but with, say, I had an e-commerce client that I'm doing manual CPC for, and I understand what I'm bidding on is quality, and that quality of traffic has come in uh, pretty consistently. I would do maybe like every seven days, you know, uh, every week. 
uh, or maybe even five days, you know, but it really uh, depends on the type of traffic. And if you're guys, if you're creating negative keywords uh, and just doing the bare minimum of going on the search terms and you do an exact match, know that something similar is going to happen again. So you're probably going to have to be in there multiple days. So do what Ryan was talking about. If you see a search term, maybe do like a phrase that encompasses that uh, negative qualifier that makes the whole search term negative instead of just doing exact match because it'll save you a lot of time from being inside the account daily. That sounds good. And I can't really stress enough how important the search terms report is, you know, and adding negative keywords. I think out of everything, if you only take away search terms report and negative keywords and just do that inside Google ads on a regular basis, I think you'll see somewhat like uh, at least some sort of success because I think it's that important. I think it's just as important as maybe your ad copy, your bidding strategy, your budget. I really put search terms report up there, you know, and adding negative keywords because it's all about getting that quality of traffic coming through. You know, that is, has to be number one is that are you advertising to the right people? If the question, if the answer is yes, then it's only a matter of time before those people are going to start buying your products uh, you know, signing up for your business like services or getting in touch, leaving a quote form. It's only a matter of time because you're advertising to the right people. You're showing up for the right searches. It just takes time. And that is the other thing with Google ads, as Gene and I always refer to, it's not a get rich quick scheme. This isn't, you know, something that can be like achieved overnight. It takes time, you know, we 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 are Google Ads account managers, but at the same time, we're also data analysts. You know, we're reviewing the data. We need cold, hard data inside the accounts to optimize from, to make data driven decisions from. Otherwise, we do, we we don't know. We're we're basically operating blindly. You know, so the data inside the account is important. But at the same time, it does take time and we need search terms inside the account so we can basically make sure we're advertising to the right people with the right intent. I, it's just it's so important, guys. You really need to if you don't even know what search terms are and things like that, definitely watch. Go back, watch this episode, make some notes because it is so important. Um, Gene, any final thoughts before I, uh, I, I sign off? No. Yeah. I think that's really important um, to be in the search terms like that. You know, especially if you're a beginner Google ads manager, a lot of the times, like what Ryan says, you can't, you have to let them know the client, you can't guarantee the sales leads, opt-ins, whatever it may be, but you can guarantee the quality of traffic and you cannot guarantee quality of traffic if you're not understanding what terms are filing in. So you have to be in a search terms, you know, weekly, at least if not daily, if you're obsessed like me and Ryan, we're in the daily so uh we're making sure that the, even the impressions are the, the right impression so no that's it i think this is very important for anyone that's beginning in google ads and will continue to provide vi value for uh beginner google ads managers that's great cool and where can people find you if they're interested in working with you long term yeah so you could s see right here wait i don't think they can can they see i Oh, I don't I know. Is see. this only for us? Okay, <laughs> never mind. I'm at genevillanos.com. That's where you can find me. <laughs> cool. I I couldn't see it, but maybe they can. So uh, yeah, I'm at ryanfentonppc.co.uk. Uh, we both offer audits. We both offer management. You know, so uh, feel free to reach out, and we can help you with your businesses on Google Ads. Um, yeah, really great episode today. I think on negative keywords. Really looking forward to the next one. Whether or not it's Gene and I together again, who knows? It might be some individual screen sharing episodes, things like that. I'm really keen to do more of those because it's more demonstrational for you guys. You get to see firsthand how we work and what we're looking for and what metrics we're looking for when we're reviewing accounts. So other than that, uh, next episode is probably going to be out 12 a.m. I think it is on Mountain Time, if I believe so, right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're everywhere. YouTube. Uh, Spotify, uh, I know it says Shopify then, uh, Apple Podcasts, you know, TikTok, Instagram, we're all over the channel. So make sure you give us a, a like, a follow, keep up to date with our, uh, our shows. And we look forward to hearing from you soon, guys, and on to the next episode. So take care. Thank you. <laughs>